Hello comrades and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of The Communist. My name is Jack Ty Wilson and I'll be your host for this episode. And welcome back to part three of our new podcast series Towards the Revolutionary Communist Party. If you haven't listened to previous episodes, then we definitely recommend jumping in from the start. We've got an episode on how to build the party and an episode on how to build the communist press. But for this week's episode, we're going to be discussing a question that we received from a listener on the topic of whether the RCP is going to be running in this year's general election. And just as a general reminder, if our listeners want to send in questions or reports about party building, then please do send them in and we'll try and include them on the podcast. Just head to communist.red forward slash submit to get in touch with us. So for this week's episode, we're joined by uh, joined once again by Ben Glonetsky, who's the National Secretary uh, and a member of the Executive Committee of the soon-to-be Revolutionary Communist Party. Hey Ben, how's it going? You've been away for a few weeks, haven't you? That yeah, right? that's right, Jack. Yeah, that's it. I missed a couple of, of uh, weeks, missed a recording of, of the podcast. I was up in Scotland visiting the comrades, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Newcastle, so I stopped, stopped nice. by on the way back. Whole road trip, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was good to, good to see everybody. Uh, See what's going on up there. Comrades are doing very well. Yeah, and you capped it off with uh, the Central Committee meeting last weekend. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was back back in time for a really good CC down in London. And what was discussed at the uh, Central Committee meeting? It was a bit. It was a range of things. We discussed the situation in Britain, and also discussed the situation in the Middle East quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And then also some of the tasks that flow from that political situation. What it is that the communists need to do. I, mean, I think the main thing, to be honest, that came out of the CC meeting was there's a lot of discussion about what all these events, both in Britain and across the world, what impact are they having on people's consciousness? How is it causing people to think mm-hmm. about the world? And to what extent is it causing them to look for alternatives, look for explanations? Mm-hmm. Obviously, that's where we come in. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing from our point of view. People should be questioning what's going on in the world. And we, cause when we have something to say about that, we have answers. There was a lot of discussion about that. It wasn't just a list of events, you know, just Mm. a kind of summary of what you can read in the news. It was, yeah, and what impact is that having on working class people, young people, students, and and how can we connect with those people? That was really the main content of the CC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the CC meeting took place, I think, the day after uh, George Galloway's uh, victory, this this thumping majority that he gained in the uh, the by-election. In uh, Rochdale, so I think that was mentioned mm-hmm. quite a bit in the the, the session on uh, British perspectives. And yeah, what is the uh, the communist analysis, if you will, of this uh, this quite uh, I would say quite a seismic event in, in British politics? Yeah, it is, and and it was discussed a lot for exactly this reason because this is a symptom of all that questioning that there is, all that anger that there is, especially obviously around Gaza and the Middle East. The symptom, the result of that is is Galloway's victory. I, th- I really think that. That by-election, it's a bit of a, a peek into the future mm, because you had definitely. ex-Labour MPs, one on the right and one on the left, <laughs> the Labour Party collapsing, and the Tories obviously absolutely nowhere. And just lots of anger, chaos, confusion. Mm-hmm. That is, yeah, that is British politics. That is the British politics of the future. Mm-hmm. And so, and yeah, like you say, a massive like a seismic event, for sure. Um, <clears throat> I think the main significance of it because also, it wasn't just the election, it was Sunak's speech afterwards. Yes, of course, he came out of 10 Downing Street onto his big podium and gave this uh, this really kind of, uh, you know, worried speech, I would say. That was the tone that came from it, saying, you know, our democracy is under attack, all of these different things. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, his solution is therefore to curtail democracy even further by clamping yeah. down on that. And what yeah. a mad, what a mad yeah. thing to say, like what a mad thing you would think, anyway, it looks on the surface. How on earth is one little by-election that, mm-hmm. yeah, admittedly for the establishment was a complete was chaotic, was a real mm-hmm. kick in the kick in the face for the establishment. But um, how is one little by-election suddenly a big threat to democracy? Yeah, but what you realise is that that Galloway, this whole he is he is he he's a kind of lightning rod mm-hmm. for all this anger that exists, especially around Gaza. And there's, there's been this conspiracy of silence in the establishment and the media. They've got, they've got blood on their hands, these people. Mm-hmm. They, have, they have literally been getting away with murder for months, for years. And here's a man who all of a sudden is just, it's, it's like the emperor's new clothes, he's just pointing to them and he's exposing them. He's saying, mm-hmm. you're, you're murderers. You're, you're supporting genocide. 
and 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 the yeah, it is a threat to their whole system, to their whole setup that they've got this establishment. Mm-hmm. He's he's threatening to to lift the veil. Basically, mm-hmm. he is going to lift the veil. He's going to go into parliament. He's going to make these big speeches that he makes. It's going to go all over social media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's going to be a bit like. And so the entire establishment is now in the same way they did with Corbyn. They're they're going to mobilize to try and destroy this guy mm-hmm. and bring him down. They're going to use every possible argument they can from the left from the right anything they can find to to chip away at this guy and uh and and this is going to be their policy now because they are scared of him and so it's quite a significant it's a tremor obviously on its own it's Mm -hmm. not it's not a revolution starting or anything like this (laughs) galloway is not going to do that but but it is a significant thing i think Mm -hmm. uh a a bit of a a tremor of of much bigger things to come and do you think potentially it could have uh, you know, further ramifications, like a knock-on effect, if you will, and, and kind of lift the sights of uh, people you know, campaigning in, in other constituencies where the, you know, the Labour MP, for example, is uh, you know, voted against a ceasefire and there's a lot of anger. I know, you know, for example, uh, you know, I, I work around uh, uh, Tower Hamlets and mm. there's an MP there, Rishnara Ali, who yeah, I think yeah, is, yeah. is very hated because of the inaction of what she's done. Do you think that you know, Galloway's victory could catalyze something else perhaps in the future or is it a bit too hard to tell, would you say? It is hard to tell. I mean, for sure, it's, it, there, as, like you say, like in, uh, in East London, in Birmingham, mm. there are these already before Galloway, there, were these, uh, there was this talk of challenging some of the more right-wing MPs, specifically over the question of Gaza. And so that was happening anyway. Yeah, for sure, Galloway will have galvanized those people and, and, and showing that it's possible, basically. There's even a challenge in Keir Starmer's own constituency mm, against course, him yeah. uh, from the left as well. But <clears throat> whether that will coalesce into any kind of coherent uh, campaign, um, united group, I, I don't know. There's, I think it's pretty unlikely, to be honest, mm-hmm. myself. But, but you can't rule it out. Anything can happen. We've got to keep an eye on stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. certainly possible um, mm-hmm. for things like that to, to happen, and, and we'll have to pay close attention. Mm-hmm. And certainly if they're, you know sizable meetings, gatherings, rallies, or anything like that that are going on, the communists should be there putting oh, yeah, forward yeah. a communist program, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. for sure. No, we'll, we'll definitely be there for that sort of thing. We mm-hmm. are, yeah, like mm-hmm. I said, we are paying close attention to these things. We've got tabs and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we'll get stuck in um, yeah. where we can. I guess that brings us uh, nicely on to uh, a question that we've received from a listener uh, to the podcast series, actually. Uh, a listener from uh, Rhonda Sinontaf, I believe. I think that's how it's pronounced. Apologies <laughs> if my Welsh pronunciation isn't very good. I'm from up north. We don't have any uh, any Welsh town names up there. Um, but the question is, um, is the Revolutionary Communist Party, which we're founding uh, in May, is it going to run in this year's general election? I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, ben, what do you think about that? Yeah, it is an interesting question. Look, we, we know, I think, that the, the Revolutionary Communist Party is not... A party like any other political party. It's not designed to be like that. What we want to do is is overthrow capitalism and put the working class in power in Britain, uh, and and via that means establish socialism as a stepping stone to communism. It's a total turning the world upside down. That's mm-hmm. our aim. That's our goal. That ex- that goes far beyond winning this or that election to and getting an MP here or there or anything like this. Uh, we we our aims are far exceed that. Um, <clears throat> now, obviously, we are not in a position to achieve that right now. We we can't. We're, we're very small in the mm-hmm. grand scheme of things. A very small uh, organization. Very small party. So our main overwhelming priority is getting bigger. Mm-hmm. numerically developing our knowledge our reputation our experience in the class struggle this is this is the main task of mm-hmm. communists at this stage um <clears throat> so like i mean when you think about the election what is ele- electoral tactics and electoral strategizing it is a valid tactic for communists to use even if that's not our end goal and actually our goals far exceed getting a few mps elected to parliament yeah it's a valid tactic and it can be used under certain circumstances and whatever else I'll come on to whether that's like exactly our, our you know, if, if we are right to do, be doing that right now. I can come on to that in a minute, but <clears throat> it is a valid thing. But we've got to think a little bit bigger as well. We've got to think beyond like, okay, general election coming up, fine. We all know what the outcome of that election is going to mm-hmm. be. Everybody <laughs> knows. Uh, there's going to be a right-wing Labour government, like yeah. a Starmer Labour government. And probably... The looks of it, it's going to be a landslide as well. <laughs> yeah, probably will be a landslide. Probably will be a majority government. Yeah. 
And that we also know what kind of policies that government is going to carry out. It will carry out Tory policies, basically. Mm. It will attack workers. It will uh, attack the welfare state, undermine the healthcare, education, everything else. It will be, it'll be a continuation of the exact same policies we have now. So what is our main job? It's to prepare for that situation. Mm -hmm. It's to prepare for that right-wing Labour government, which is going to be attacking workers and all the rest of it. What's going to happen is... We're going to need the unions are need to, going to need to struggle to defend workers' rights, workers' mm -hmm. interests, workers' standards of living, and so on. There's going to be it, potentially massive eruptions of the class struggle in that in that period under that government. I'm thinking about examples from the 70s, right-wing mm -hmm. Labour government. It was the same thing. Communists need to get ready to get stuck into those movements. Yeah. That's the main thing. That's what we have to prepare for right now. That's the RCP's main task is to prepare for that. And the point is, we aren't big enough yet. We don't have the roots in the class that we need. We we need to get educated, develop our reputation and knowledge, as I say, uh, and 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 get stuck in basically now to the class struggle as it exists. So that I think, I mean, I'll come on in a moment to well, where does electoral politics fit in in general to these things? But but right now, that is our main task, and that is what we're doing. That is what the RCP is up to at at the moment. I mean. We've talked uh, a lot throughout the party lately. It was on the front cover of the, the second issue of the communist newspaper about Port Talbot. That's an example. Massive cuts being proposed to, uh, or they, they've started even, uh, I thought the redundancy notices are, are on their way out, I think, in Port Talbot. They're, they're going to be massive cuts to, to the, the steelworks there. Mm -hmm. The communists have been getting stuck in. We haven't just been sat on the sidelines with that. We've been going door to door. We've been putting on meetings, attending the rallies, giving speeches, uh, trying to agitate for the occupation of the steelworks for a proper mm -hmm. fight back. You know, we've been in discussion with the trade unionists and so on. So we, we're getting stuck into the class struggle. We're developing party amongst the working class in Port Talbot. And you can see we're, we're trying the same thing all over the country at the minute. In Birmingham, the council has gone bankrupt and now they're imposing the biggest cuts out ever in the history of council mm -hmm. cuts. 300 million uh, pounds in cuts that they're going to be carrying out on top of selling off, I think, like 700 or 750 million pounds worth in assets, yeah. public buildings, public assets and so on. Yeah, that's right. I think they're sacking 700 workers or something yeah. like this. Cutting all culture funding. You know, bin collections are going to be uh, halved. Uh, even the streetlights are going to be dimmed or something like that mm. as well. It's absolutely it gives a real picture, I think, of, of a society in decay. Yeah. I think that's the sort of uh, con the effect on consciousness that it'll have in Birmingham. That's yeah. it. And it is, yeah. it is yeah, it is a catastrophic situation. Mm. And and obviously there's a lot of anger around that. Mm. And so what, what are the comrades in Birmingham doing? They're not just writing articles about it, although they are, but they're going to the meetings, they're going to the demonstrations, mm. they're giving speeches in the town centres on the, on the recruitment stores that we're having and so on. And they're trying to connect with that anger. They're getting mm. stuck into the struggle. That's the point. In fact, we can actually play a clip from one of those speeches uh, right now for our listeners. They're taking away our services, but more importantly, they're taking away our communities. They're taking away our sense of uh, you know, relationships with, with one another. But we have the opportunity to lead the struggle, to show the way forward on how we can actually fight back and turn this from just a city-level struggle to a more national one. The way in which we inspire hope, the, the way in which we inspire more people to get out there is if we have clear demands. I think it's been, uh, it's been pointed out, strike action is very much a, a show of force. A uh, way in which we show that we have the power. No to paying the debts. No to the cuts. We need to kick out these commissioners. Kick out Max the Axe and, and uh, his, uh, his uh, uh, lackeys. And make the bosses pay for this crisis. Reverse the austerity through the profits of, uh, of the big multinationals, of the banks, who have, uh, who have squeezed this city for too long. They're squeezing for blood now. And they'll squeeze uh, uh, further. Thank you very much. And... I mean, elsewhere, look, actually, talk, I mean, talking of voting, it's not it's certainly not a general election, but in Sheffield, the, the RCP comrades have been running in a student union election campaign. They ran for president, fairly small campaign, just a few days long. They linked the question of Gaza, the question of a proper struggle, the, the whole crisis, the establishment, everything into this campaign. It was quite a broad thing. It wasn't on narrow student issues. It was a broad political mm -hmm. campaign. And they did very, very well, and they got a, they got a real big echo uh, among people. But they're getting stuck in. They're connecting our ideas. It's look, we do we we study the ideas of Marxism. That's the that's fundamental to what the RCP does. It's it's the reading groups. It's the it's the theoretical study and discussion. But it's also about taking those ideas into the class struggle, 
uh, and, and among mm-hmm. students like they are in Sheffield and putting mm-hmm. them in the form of campaigns and stuff like mm-hmm. this. In Cardiff, the comrades have been linking up the struggle of, of doctors, the BMA. We have a comrade who's in the BMA in Cardiff. And he's been linking up with the Unite uh, members who are running the bin strike in Cardiff. And they've had joint meetings. They've coordinated action. This is all on the initiative of the RCP in mm-hmm. Cardiff. And it's getting it's getting results. In, in Cambridge, there's... Delivery riders are on uh, that are agitating. Basically, there's a lot of anger around that. The comrades again, they've been getting stuck in. They've been talking to people, interviewing them, linking them up, pushing the struggle forward constantly. In Newcastle, uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of video games industry. There are massive layoffs in the video game industry mm. at the moment. In Newcastle, we're getting stuck into that. We're putting on meetings. We're getting these getting the getting the workers together to discuss how we can fight back, what can be done, how the struggle can actually be uh, taken forward. Even even things like, they might not seem like a kind of pro- proletarian <laughs> section of society, but <laughs> in uh, in Wales, the, the farmers are, are taking action mm-hmm. and and there have been demonstrations, rallies and stuff in, uh, in Wales. And again, the RCP has been going along, getting stuck in, putting our ideas out there. And we've, um, we've been surprised, to be honest, at how good the reception has been to communist ideas. So this is the... This is the work of the RCP at the minute. It's building support for our ideas by connecting with the class struggle, gaining members, gaining experience, uh, building ourselves up basically on, mm-hmm. on that basis. This is this is how you vote for the RCP, if you like. It's not mm-hmm. putting a cross on a, on a bit of paper and that's it, this kind of passive thing. It's get stuck in with us in this work in the class struggle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what runs through all of these examples that you've given is that you know, we're, we're turning towards the working class movement with an openly communist program, mm. with open communist demands. Like, for example, uh, you know, in the in the Sheffield uh, student union elections, what was on our program? It was abolishing uh, rent, getting rid of rent payments and giving free accommodation to all the students. It was raising, raising demands like uh, having staff and student control over the universities as a means to cut the university yeah. off from the arms companies and the imperialists and so on. Uh, you know, and similarly, you know, with these uh, with the, the farmers movement that we intervened in as well, we were putting forward demands like make the billionaires pay, you know, nationalize the banks and the billionaires. And these kinds of demands, they're really shining through. They're really getting uh, getting an echo, I would say. Um, but I, mean, I guess that leads us on to like, you know, another part of this question then is that, you know, if we're not um, participating in elections uh, right now, you know, for the reasons that you've uh, that you've outlined, when would we consider doing something like that? Like, is that something that's on the on the horizon? Uh, is it something that we can, you know, expect uh, pre- anytime soon? Like, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, look, you, it's it's a tactical question. This is the thing mm-hmm. about about elections. Is is we're not principally for like you know in a principled way for or against running in in elections, even if they are to a kind of bourgeois parliament. At the end of the day, as we know, that parliament with a couple of revolutionary communist MPs is not gonna is, that is not going to be the vehicle for revolution in Britain. Um, we we want something totally different. We want the working class in power. But uh, but nevertheless, you you may well use um, an election campaign for Parliament uh, to as a platform to get our ideas out to a wider layer of people and so on. Now you could imagine hypothetically, um, for example, the situation in Port Talbot. Now as it is, the union leadership unites not doing too badly, but uh, community, for example, this unit, they're doing absolutely nothing. They're dampening down that struggle. They're they're, in fact, community is even refusing to ballot for mm. action, right? They're completely uh, dampening the struggle. It's a pretty bad situation facing the workers there. But if the union leaders, for whatever reason, decide to put up a fight and the movement became quite big and there was an occupation of steelworks and perhaps it would link up with those Welsh farmers, for example, mm. right? and the struggle actually began to spread across Wales and over the border into England as well. And you saw the steelworks in Scunthorpe, for example, also coming out in solidarity. And then it's spreading to other industries and a, and a movement really beginning to take place. Well, then you would start to think, how can we develop this movement forward? How can we link this movement to political questions and political demands? And you might look at the local MP for Port Talbot, who is, I think, Stephen Kinnock, <laughs> a very right-wing Labour MP. Yeah, the son of, uh, of uh, Neil, Neil Kinnock. Kinnock yeah. yeah, that's right. Um <laughs> And you might say, look, here is an opportunity as part of this mass movement. Here is an opportunity for the Revolutionary Communist Party to, to stand a candidate in an election against this guy and put forward our program and our idea linked entirely to that movement, basically. And it wouldn't be an election that is kind of facing towards Westminster and thinking mm. that we can, is, if only we can get that MP seat, then we can change everything from Westminster. That's not the way we look at it. We would look at that campaign as part of this mass movement in the workplaces, on the streets, 
um, that we could kind of connect with some political demands, basically, and use it as a platform to raise our ideas. And you could imagine that in any of these situations, in Birmingham, for example, in in uh, in Cardiff or, or Cambridge or, or whatever, if, if these things actually became mass struggles, then you could see the potential for us, uh, the, the kind of movement. Uh, giving us the potential to to stand a candidate in an election as part of that. The other the other requirement though is is our own size and strength. Mm. We've got to be realistic about it. It's not a small undertaking to run in, for example, a general election, uh, financially and also in terms of organisation and campaigning yeah. and so on. We don't we don't want to half ass these things. If we're going to do it. We'll do it properly. And for that, we've got to be bigger than what we are uh, right now. So I think this is the main main. Uh, the main way, these are the two things to think about, basically, when it comes to running an election. So look, as it is with this upcoming general election, it doesn't, right now, it doesn't, we're making no plans. It doesn't look likely uh, that we will be running any candidates. Um, <clears throat> obviously, things can change very quickly. We could, we could all of a sudden become a really big organization if lots of people hear this podcast and think, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to join that. But um, <clears throat> that's possible. Can't rule it out for sure. But uh, and then you might get a big mass movements bringing up somewhere where we happen to be very strong. Okay, in that case, we would we would get stuck in uh, on that on that basis. But as it stands, that's not looking likely. But look, in the future, they'll be we'll get bigger. The movement's going to pick up. There'll be by elections, and uh, and the RCP will be there. Mm -hmm. Actually, all of this reminds me of uh, an article that we put out recently in the in the Communist and also on our website of. Uh, our comrades about uh, 80 years ago in the original Revolutionary Communist mm. Party led by Ted Grant and Jock Haston and, uh, and their followers and so on, who, yeah, in, in a similar sort of situation to what you're describing, you know, unofficial strikes of thousands of, uh, you know, Welsh miners and so on, uh, they decided to run uh, in a, a by-election uh, in uh, actually Neath, which is right next to Patalbert, mm. and they, you know, mobilized hundreds of, of their members across the country. They all went into this, uh, this, this little mining uh, village and they really, you know, electrified uh, this this uh, this this town. You know, they gave uh, speeches outside of the mines. They held meetings in in, in the big uh, town hall and so on. Debates with the uh, the Communist Party, who at the time were obviously uh, Stalinist, and they went, you know, door to door selling their newspaper, which at the time was called uh, Socialist Appeal, mm. and putting forward, yeah, like a, a, a communist program, just like you know we would do today. So yeah, I mean, if comrades would like to to read more about that, I would I'd highly recommend reading the article. Uh, which is available in the link in the show notes of this podcast. I think it's a very shining example of how how Bolsheviks operate and how you know we can use things like this to build uh, our organization. Um, so yeah, you mentioned you know if if someone wants to vote for us, and actually I think the reason why that question was sent in initially was because one of the comrades had a conversation with someone who said, "Oh, you know I haven't got enough time to join right now, but how can I vote for you guys?" Well. You said that you know if you want to vote, then you need to vote you know with your time, with your money. So yeah, just to our listeners at home, people who maybe aren't members yet, mm -hmm. how can they quote unquote vote for the RCP today? <laughs> yeah, well that's it. Look, there's there's different things that you can do. The main thing that we need, the main thing that the RCP needs, is for people to get involved, to to join us. Basically, look, we are we are not yet uh, a mass party, a mass organization, or anything else. What we are building here is a party filled with people who are are willing to put the time in to, to educate themselves mm -hmm. about politics, about Marxism, about communist ideas, and train themselves and be trained. That's what we do. We train people. We, we educate them in those ideas and we train them in how to connect those ideas to the class struggle. What we want, what we need is people who are able to stand up in front of a crowd of people and, and make the case and make the case for for communism or for, for a socialist point of view or for a particular policy to link up as they are in cards, to link up the, the bin workers strike with the, with the doctor strike, for example. Make that case, make those arguments, give that speech. Mm -hmm. And all of it is founded on those ideas. And that obviously requires time. But, but what else are you spending your time on? Uh, <laughs> if it, this is, we're talking about changing the world here. Yeah. What are you spending your time on that's more important than that? That's the main thing we need. That's the most important thing when it comes to, to being a member of the RCP. And if you've got the time or you can make the time, then that's what we want. And we want you to join and we want you to spend your time on that. Um, obviously, not everybody does have the time and, uh, and there are other things that it's possible to do. We have our newspaper uh, and, and you can subscribe to the newspaper and you can get your ideas that way. You can hear about what we're up to. Subscribe to the newspaper. You can get the subscription for yourself. You can get a bulk subscription mm. and you can sell a few to a few other people as well. That also is a little bit of an investment of time, but it's not that much. And that would help us get the ideas out to a wider layer of people. So you can do that too. 
And then, of course, we need we do need money. Mm. We do need people who uh, who donate to us. We don't have any big donors, and so we need all the financial support we can get. So if you don't have a lot of time, but you have a little bit of money that you think you could be able to, to free up and to send our way, then obviously you can make it set up a regular donation or make a one-off donation, uh, and that would be a big help too. But uh, but yeah, the, the main thing is is that we want people to join the RCP, and not just join yourself. But bring other people in, whether that's meet people you meet by selling our newspaper, for example, putting up some posters and some stickers. We're having a big recruitment drive at the moment. Mm. Join your party, join the RCP. We've got this founding congress coming up in May. That's what this is all about. We're building towards that. So join yourself, bring others in. If you're in a part of the country where we don't have anything at the moment, set up a cell, set up your own thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there are a lot of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people who are at least interested in the ideas of communism mm -hmm. and you can have a discussion with them. You can sell them a pair, copy of the communist newspaper and, and you can talk to them and you can try and get them involved and you can build a cell of this organization mm -hmm. wherever you are. If it's in your school or your workplace or your local area, it can be done and we can send you the material that you need to do that, papers, posters and so on. So this is all the stuff that you can do. Yeah, it's more than, than checking a box and, and voting. But but this is this is the how we will build the foundation with which we can then have a mm -hmm. party that can properly uh, get our program out in general mm -hmm. elections, participate in these mass movements in this way. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, everything needs to be focused on the question of recruitment, of building uh, the RCP, uh, you know, into a strong uh, a strong organization. And I've been hearing some incredible. Uh, success stories mm. from across the international actually in the past uh, in the past week or so even I think things are going very very quickly at the moment I mean for example uh, in the US our, our comrades uh, have la launched this uh, new party just as we are called the Revolutionary Communists of America they had their, uh, their, their, their sort of their meeting their, their all members meeting where they decided to do this and immediately afterwards in New York City uh, the comrades marched through Brooklyn mm. uh, with a big banner loads of uh, red flags with hammers and sickles on them and so on and it was recorded and it was posted online and this got picked up. It went it went viral, actually. It got shared by people on the left, people on the right. Jordan Peterson, I think, shared it. But I think, you know, more importantly, it got shared you know, across the world in places like Russia, in China. 220 million people viewed this video. Mm. Uh, you know, just a video of the comrades marching and chanting and so on. It really sort of caught the imagination of That's people. That's it. It shows yeah. there's an appetite out there. People yeah. want to see this kind of stuff. And the result has been extremely good. The, yeah. the comrades have had hundreds and hundreds of applications to join just off the back of that one video yeah. you know and another uh, success story that i heard was uh, in sweden in fact um there was a, a young comrade i think who's uh, who's just joined or just got involved with uh, with our organization uh, in sweden it's also called the rcp or the, the rkp i guess and uh, yeah they immediately took a stack of uh, of, of, of newspapers and they went to a factory near where they live you know i'm not sure what kind of factory it was um but yeah, they just stood outside. In fact, they walked straight through the gates and just started trying to sell this paper, chanting communist slogans and so on. And the security guard came up and tried to stop them, at which point the workers then intervened and mm. uh, wanted to hear what this, uh, what this young comrade had to say. And on the back of that, they managed to get 10 contact details. And they're setting up a meeting right now of factory workers who are interested in getting organized yeah. in the Revolutionary Communist Party. And there's no reason why we can't be using these exact methods right here in Britain. You know, there's, there's factories, there's workplaces everywhere, schools, colleges. You know, what's stopping us? That's right. Yeah. No, it shows what, what is possible. And, and all those examples that I gave, these places where we're getting stuck into the class struggle, the aim of every single one, Port Talbot, Cardiff, Cambridge, Newcastle, the aim should be to create a cell of delivery riders in, in Cambridge mm. or uh, a couple of cells of anyone actually because it's Port Talbot business anyone in Port Talbot because this this closure of the factory or these job loss at the factory actually will um, affect the whole town mm -hmm. um, or, or video game workers in Newcastle anywhere we get stuck in like that we should go in with the aim of bringing it building a cell basically of workers in that particular industry or people involved in that particular struggle um, who can who, who can go beyond just the specifics of that struggle and actually fight for communism in general build a cell of the revolutionary communist party mm -hmm. that's the aim mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that reminds me as well, actually, that uh, the issue of the paper, issue four of the communists, which is coming out today. In fact, I think it's arriving uh, right now as we speak, uh, is going to have a special uh, party building pullout, which will have essentially an instruction manual step by step on how you at home can build a communist cell, a communist branch of the Revolutionary Communist Party. So if you want to get your hands on that paper, uh, which also includes, in fact, our draft uh, British Perspectives document, which will be discussed at the uh, the founding Congress of the RCP, which Ben uh, mentioned uh, earlier. 
If you want to subscribe to that paper, get your hands on it, then head to communist.red forward slash subscribe or head to the link in the show notes of this podcast. So yeah, I think that brings us really to the end of, uh, of this week's episode. Is there anything else that you'd like to say, Ben? No, no, I think that's covered it. And what are we going to discuss next week, do you think? Anything in mind? Yeah, I think next week we should have a little chat about revolutionary finance, mm. about the need to finance the party, how we do it, and how it's different to, to how other political organizations finance themselves, and some ideas, some good examples of, of how we can get the best out of, out of the work of the comrades from the point of view of raising money. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Ben. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Cheers, and thanks to our listeners once again for tuning in to Marxist Voice, uh, the podcast of The Communist. And make sure you stay tuned for future episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events and party building brought to you by the International Marxist Tendency. Have a good week. <laughs>